little bit more on alignment, just some of the basic measurements of alignment. We have a measurement called caster, which is one of the big three, the caster, camber, and toe. And caster basically can be illustrated with a caster like the bottom of your toolbox. So if this is the front of the vehicle to the right here, and the caster is allowing the tire from the angle from where it starts to where it pivots on axle is swept back, that's a negative caster. And that's good for having the steering wheel return to zero center, which it might not want to do, remember, if we don't have a steering angle sensor or green with reality. But that's what's going to help there. If you have a manual uh, steering vehicle, an older vehicle without power steering, sometimes they actually had a positive caster. But pretty much anything today has electric power steering, either hydraulic or, or electric at this point, and they're a negative caster. So the amount of negative caster we see right there is, is shown in those left and front uh, specifications, along with camber and tow. So that's caster. Now let's take a look at if it doesn't return to center. That's a common symptom caused by either steering component too tight, binding. Somebody didn't uh, use the torque wrench. If you want to visit the Delphi YouTube page and look at some of these components, these tie rods and control arms and pitman arms and things like that being replaced. There's a lot of how-to videos on the Delphi YouTube page. Check it out, including mentions about making sure that you've calibrated your torque wrench recently. But if you didn't torque this down, you just burped it down with your impact wrench. You might have this so tight that it has a hard time returning to zero after you make a corner. The wheel doesn't come back to center. The other thing that can cause that is not having the proper caster. So on to our next measurement. Well, one of the big three for alignment measurements of your caster, your toe, and your camber is camber. Now, camber is something that can cause various problems. One of them is the wear on the side of the tire. So here's your condition, a possible scenario. One tire, one side of the tire, I should say, is wearing much more than the other. Now, there could be other causes for that, but one big possible cause is a camber being off. So if you have some camber wear on the inside of the tire, you need to make sure you're not having an issue with camber. So what is camber exactly? Let's move some tools out of our way and talk about camber and toe simply with a pair of shoes. So I have a pair of boots here with pretty flat soles. If I walk with my feet flat down and the soles are worn evenly, I won't be walking on the sides, the outside sides of my shoes or the inside. So I won't have negative camber or positive camber. So that's what camber is. It's basically like walking on the insides or the outside of your shoe soles. Not only is that not comfortable for you, that's not good for shoe sole wear. And the same thing for alignment, stability, and camber wear. As we look at these tire wear illustrations left to right, we talked about camber wear and how it can wear one side of the tire compared to another. But a similar type wear, maybe on the side, may not be a camber issue at all, but use your hand to feel the smoothness of the wear. If the wear, the uneven wear on any particular sector of the tire feels kind of wavy, they call it cupping. And cupping is a classic problem that can occur if you have an irregular uh, mating of the surface of the tire to the road. What does that mean? It means you've got bouncy, bouncy, bounce going on. You've got dampers, you've got struts or shocks that are worn out, and that car is just bouncing up and down like a clown's car in a circus. So when that happens, or in some cases even severe wheel balance issues, you'll have cupping. That's in the center. Now over towards your far right, the illustration shows the underinflation. Now if that car's tire has an underinflated tire, it's supposed to be, we'll say 38 PSI, it's 28 PSI. You're going to have the center of the tire kind of crease in, pull, pucker up, and the outsides of the tire are applying more to the road. So more of the weight of the vehicle is applied unevenly to the outside sides of the tire, making them wear out. Now, that can also be due to cornering. Hard cornering can occur on both sides of the tire as well. If you have overinflation, just the opposite of what you see in that illustration on the far right, overinflation will wear out the inside of the tire where because the tire is not compressing, it's got, let's say, 
42 PSI, it should have 32 PSI. And now we got a tire, not only is it going to be a lot warmer in danger of blowout, as well as an underinflated tire can also get warm and blow out. We have a tire that has the raised rib of the very center making more contact with the road, therefore wearing the middle, the inside of the tread out faster than the outsides of the tread. Just the opposite of what you're seeing there with underinflation. Now let's talk about toe and we will use our shoes again in this illustration. So in the measurement of measuring toe, on your alignment rack, if you see some positive toe or negative toe on one or both of the tires, it's going to create a pull in steering. In addition, some irregular tire wear called sharp edges or feathering. So as you feel that wear, you're going to feel it like kind of sharp because literally the tire, or in this case my shoe, is moving down the road at a kind of a, a non uh, straight away angle. So it's just kind of chafing along like that or scuffing along sometimes it's called. So zero degrees toe would be like you're walking one foot in front of the other completely straight. Some positive toe, one of the wheels, let's say left positive toe, is hanging out like that or the other one like that or both together. And if they're both off an equal number, positive or negative toe, you're going to get possibly no pull of the steering. The steering is going to track straight away, except for possibly a little bit of the crown in the road, like normal, but you won't notice it, but the tires will wear unevenly and wear prematurely. So what we're looking for is conditions like toe wear as still occurs after alignment. What can cause that? You're wondering. Well, what can cause toe wear after a good alignment job can be worn suspension components and bushings. And speaking of causes for different conditions like toe being worn suspension components and bushings, remember you can't do an alignment if you need to sell the customer tie rod ends or even a control arm or ball joints or stabilizer mounts. All these things must be repaired first and then the alignment redone or it won't hold. And speaking of tips on alignments and worn suspension components, the do's and don'ts about not burping down components with impact wrenches, using torque wrenches properly, the proper methods to separate some of these components. A lot of YouTube information is out there from manufacturers of alignment equipment and several good YouTube segments on how to and do's and don'ts on various components of suspension systems on the Delphi YouTube page. So be sure to check that out and get all the information you can before you get into deep with steering and suspension.